welcome to NEKVT Rocks. And my guest today is Martha Sylvester, again. Hello, Pam. Welcome back. <laughs> I, I sort of feel like you're a regular, but so much seems to be happening in Coventry and particularly in the fire district that it's so great to have you come and help us make sense of it. Because believe me, I can't follow it. Um, I'm struggling a little myself <laughs> these days, but I'm more than gladly. Update me. <laughs> well, uh, the first thing that's changed since I was here last is I'm still an activist, but I'm also the elected clerk of the fire district. Um, I'm three months in. And, and that's a high salary position? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a high salary position at all. It's a high volume of hours position, but yeah. not salary. It's, it's a volunteer position. Yeah, and I think that really needs to be emphasized. You are doing this for no money. Correct. <laughs> that's amazing. That's a lot of hours. It is a lot of hours. Yeah. I, um, my, we've been ho holding weekly meetings. Um, I've had six meetings in the last, in just the month of December. Wow. So we are in a full blown audit. Yeah. And that's not coming out very well. <laughs> um, there are quite a few concerns with uh, our financial stability. We are functionally bankrupt at this time and the audit isn't done and we're still uncovering things daily. And this is going to sound like a really stupid question. Uh, how could that possibly happen? Isn't there a system of checks and balances? Well, you would hope that your government is functioning properly, but unless you're engaging, you don't know whether it is right. or not. And we know that I've been engaging and known <laughs> that we are functionally bankrupt and things have not been to Vermont statute. And this is just reaffirming that motions weren't made, decisions were made by one person, one person's signature on financials. It's you know, crazy to me. It's sort of the the old quote British feudal system, <laughs> where the Lord of the Manor makes the decisions. Yeah, it, it, it's really strange. I mean, you think there's a system set up with a lot of built-in checks and balances, and yet here we are again. And I would bet this is happening in so many small towns. Um, this is I. To be completely honest with you, I blame the Vermont legislators. Mm -hmm. The citizens Again. of Vermont, <laughs> yes, the citizens of Vermont cannot petition and pass laws, so that's why we elect people. That's why right. your vote is so important. Right. Um, engagement is critical. And, yeah. you know, if you don't engage, if you're not asking questions, you're not holding your elected officials accountable, then this is what you get. You get a government that is run by people who do what they want, not for the people. Right. What does what does this 1.4 million is that the number I heard? This 1.4 million debt mean to those of you living in the fire district? Um, well, as uh, as you know, we weren't able to drink our water for <laughs> how many years? Three years. Um, so there was grants and loans taken out, federal dollars, state mm -hmm. dollars. Um, so that's why we're going through this audit. The fire district hasn't been audited since 09, uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very interesting. Um, I've been on the job, because it is a job, whether right. I get paid or not, it's a job. <laughs> um, I've been on the job since October, and it's only been three weeks that I've actually had all of the fire district records, and I'm not even sure that I actually have them all yet. Um, Where are they hidden? Buried, locked. <laughs> they, they were they were housed with the um, former chair. We mm -hmm. now have a new chair of the Prudential Committee. We've also had a resignation from the Prudential Committee, so we have an open seat. If any Coventry residents interested, submit a letter of interest to do the they have board to be clerk. in the fire district or in the whole of Coventry? Um, you have to be. You have to reside within the fire district boundaries. Okay. Um, but we've asked the select board to make an appointment, which is again another broken mechanism of right. Vermont legislature. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I'm just in awe. I, you, you've heard me say for three years right. that, you know, this needs to be fixed. This needs to be fixed. And when you realize everything that you have said is actually fact now. <laughs> and that you're not really crazy. Right. And it's actually very overwhelming. I never wanted to be more wrong in my life, right. but I mean, we can't. We struggle. We can't pay one fifteen fifty, and now I'm not even sure that two hundred dollars a quarter for water would cover our debt, our operating costs. How many people actually live? I mean, real live human bodies live in the fire district. 
Well, see, that's that's a bit of a difference. We have roughly 60 connections, okay. um, but we do have the school Yeah, is a connection. Um, we have a restaurant that's a connection. Right. We have a few businesses, um, and we have several homes. So we do have low-income senior housing that's also in the district. So it's kind of hard. Um, I'm still struggling with getting an accurate voter checklist together compiled. Right. So it's... And clearly the school isn't a voter and nor us unless the parents of that particular child live in the fire district correct yeah so, and we also have um, several municipal buildings that are um, connections for the fire um, to the fire district that don't get a vote um, property owners who um, own a property in the fire district boundaries but don't reside in that property right. do not get a vote but yet their the tenants their do. property gets used as collateral which is how do you how do you justify that i ran that by somebody the other day and she didn't believe me i mean how how does that actually happen that a property can be used as collateral without the onus of the property being involved well i have, i've actually posed this question to um our auditor, Mr. Uh -huh. Graham, who <laughs> will blow your head up with information. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he said it's basically a tax levied against your property. So it's not really, it would, they would take all of the fire district's money. I, I don't completely understand it because it doesn't really make sense to me. I'm not like a numbers okay. person, but I'm definitely. So the property tax money that would come from those properties instead of going to the fire district well we pay a water rent so it would be the water rent okay. that was collected would go to whoever puts the lien on your property so right. instead of paying from what mr graham has told me i'm not i mean i have yeah. to believe him he's cool. the expert right so um but he's the first person that's actually in four years been able to explain something different to me as but who nobody actually else has puts the to. lien on your property um i would imagine the debt whoever has the debt we have um, several loans out with right. um, we have state loans we have federal dollars as you know we got the biggest federal grant in you know yeah. almost a million so and here's another of those impossible questions walking down this lane <laughs> I'm getting used to it <laughs> yeah the lien against the property means that property there are major implications for a property that has a lien against it so those of you who live there who presumably can't sell your property to move because of this whopping great lien. And yet you had no involvement in having that, being the cause of that lien in the first place. Well, there was a bond vote. So you okay. have to have a vote of the fire district members. Um, okay. But I did challenge this bond vote in court. I challenged the legality of it, um, the process of it. I am currently having a ratifying election for the election where I was voted in because <laughs> <laughs> there are a reason why there is called due process, why right. you have deadlines, why you have notification. Right. That's the key to democracy is engagement. It's of the people, allegedly, by the people, and allegedly. for the people. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. So that's, you know, it, it's a big issue. So I um, backed off because it was the biggest grant. We couldn't drink water. I thought that's right. what was best for my community for, Absolutely. you know, and... I'm starting to second guess that. Wow. So, it, you know, that has implications for bond votes and other kinds of votes in other communities. What happens if a town, if it, say Newport, for example, if we took out one of those TIF grants, we've had one before, but if we took out another one for, say, fixing the hole, would that then mean that a lien could be get put against all of our properties? It's an interesting question. I'm, I'm not really sure. I do know that, you know, if when you get grants or federal dollars, yeah. you have documents that you sign. Yes. That or the city signs, right. Right. That, yeah. that your, your governing body is yeah. your, in the fire district's case, it's the Prudential Committee or a select right. board or city council. But they have to, in an open meeting, discuss this. They have to vote on it. And then they appoint somebody that will sign or right. the members Absolutely. sign together. And that's also a huge part of this problem right. where that was not done right so and are the implications of what that grant or loan means fully made clear to those who vote yes or no 
or who have input. Um, I Like I said, I'm sitting here not feeling very sound in the information that I have, so I don't and think... And you know, have way more information correct. Than, than your average there. <laughs> correct. Right. Correct. I've been on this trying to figure this out for four years, so... Yeah. And I still... And it's, I have access to all the records, and I'm still yeah. dumbfounded, for I mean, lack of a better word. What this does for me is the next time this comes around in Newport City, and the city proposes taking out a TIF loan or any other kind of loan that we the citizens at the hearing need to ask what are the implications for us if you lot don't pay it back correct or don't correct. make your payments right and if they don't know then they shouldn't be and also there's um, right. also when you get loans and grants there's also a checklist that starts off yes and there's also um, it's highly regulated so if you're out of compliance with some of them that You're entity in has the right to pull that them yes, dollars do. back at any time. Right. But so where does that leave you? Particularly when those dollars have already dug a nice new water pipeline and are finally pumping good water into your houses. Well, um, that, that's that's up for debate that's also too. Debatable. Oh, cool. It's up for debate too. We also um, <laughs> we also have an active litigation um, about this treatment system. Um, the litigation's been going on since the treatment system and where our wellhead is. So how do you go with $1.4 million when you don't even have proper access to your the water wellhead. source? Yeah. So that's a big, huge issue, and that's been my main that concern for issue. three years. Where so, is, just as a sort of sideline here, where is the wellhead in relation to the spill that has just happened, leachate um, spill? I would say probably roughly half a mile. Hmm. From, That's not very far. In the Black, our, our wellhead is in the flood zone of the Black River. Yeah. Um, and I must say I'm a little disappointed with um, not getting a response back from Casella about that. Wow. Um, I did send an email in question and got no response, so. Though they may not know yet, but but that's not very reassuring for that's, you guys. That's not good neighborly business, no. irregardless, and, so. Right. And I've, I always come to the table irregardless, so. Yeah. If you're really community oriented, you come to the table, right, wrong, or indifferent. And ask the questions. Correct. Yeah. And even if the answer's, I don't know, then. You're still coming to the table, you're still right. engaging. Yeah. Wow. So I don't have an answer for that, Pam. I'm, oh. I'm, they're still cleaning up. They're still there. So yeah, I don't. I don't have and an will answer. Will be for a while, probably. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Huh. So the good news of, of that, the only hope I do have for that, <laughs> though, is that our PFAS testing um, was inconclusive because it sat so long at the testing <laughs> facility that <laughs> now we're required. News. Well, that's good news because if it reached the river, it will show the contamination. Okay. So, so they're redoing the testing. So yeah. Every, yeah. When will that happen. be retested? I'm um, not sure. I'm, we're still waiting to figure that one out. The state's a little backlogged. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> wow. But your your vote is your voice. So <laughs> if there's something you want to change, be that change. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this certainly is complicated. So other than other than this massive amount of money that <laughs> has somehow appeared out of nowhere what else is happening with the fire district I, not that i'm saying that isn't enough <laughs> i'm watching you go gray overnight oh, <laughs> i'm uh i think you called me tenacious the last time i was here and Probably. i'm not feeling tenacious <laughs> these days i'm feeling quite overwhelmed and i know i'm not the only person feeling I can overwhelmed imagine. Um, we have a serious audit going on and we have some serious problems that we just don't have an answer for because we don't even know the depth of it yet. Um, the citizens have petitioned and asked for the previous chair to resign. She has not resigned. She um, is still trying to work through a transition. I, we have, I think, another two weeks to decide whether they're going to warn the meeting on what they're going to mm -hmm. do. The Prudential Committee accepted the petition, but we did have a resignation of, an, of the other member. <laughs> that was a good thing. <laughs> yes, and she did resign as chair, and we do have a new chair who is r working really hard to try to lead yeah. and sort through this, all of these many, many complex issues that one person just can't fill in their head.
Right. Is there a process for removal of somebody that basically has had a vote of no confidence? Um, technically, I'm not aware of one. Right. However, fire districts are slightly different because they're allowed to have bylaws that state that you're allowed to vote a member out ah. of your committee. But um, that brings us back to another issue where we don't have any signatures on documents. <laughs> it's not funny, <laughs> Pam. <laughs> I know it's you're absolutely <laughs> right it's not that's one of those sort of what yeah um <laughs> so for lack of a better word yes so yes. <laughs> wow <laughs> let, let me check this one out as okay, go ahead. I'm still <laughs> go spinning easy my on own me. wheels here so decisions would get made at a select board meeting and a document should have been signed as a result of that meeting um well meeting minutes should have disclosed who should have signed it who well they should have been meeting minutes should right. have been signed um they should have reflected the business of yes. the meeting and because they would be approved at the next meeting correct right? um that's that's a bottom line issue too so how procedure was followed statutory procedure which uh -huh. is required was definitely not followed on many levels um throughout the prudential committee's yeah. decision making process and Obviously, if there's one signature on every document, there's an issue. If you can't go back in your meeting right. minutes and look and say, okay, the Prudential Committee voted to um, allow the chair to take action, right? There's not, you can't go back and follow this chain of order of how things are done. And that's just so, straight chaos. <laughs> and that's what's happened. Correct, correct. Wow. Are there other official documents that have not been signed? that you found so um, far <laughs> there are it, okay so I'm, I'm hard pressed to find a proper document <laughs> oh um, yeah um, I'm new to Clark's position I right. never imagined I would as I say go to the dark side being an elected right. <laughs> official from being an activist um, I was an appointed official before for the town right. um, but an elected official holds a little bit different and a clerk is the one who oversees your elections they're the ones right. who you know are your they take the meeting minutes they're yeah. the ones that you know fill out the public's requests um, so I've had some requests from an auditor that I can't fill because the documents don't exist so that's an issue signatures not being on documents I not being able to find motions and meeting minutes um, right. again one person making decisions without the other the other two prudential committees weren't even aware of half of the decisions that we're going back and looking at per the auditor right. the other two prudential committee members are we're hearing for the first time our new chair hears things for the first time mm -hmm. and if you remember correctly last time I was arguing about she was appointed by the select board and right. we had had several meetings where she wasn't voted in so she was voted in to the Prudential Committee mm -hmm. along with the current treasurer. We now have a delinquent water rent collector, which is required by statute and has not happened since, I think, 09. So <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah, so um, on the 15th, uh, we're holding a district-wide meeting to ratify the and approve the officers because the procedures were not followed properly. And mm -hmm. I will not participate in dysfunction. I will not cut out the democratic process. It's, right. it's just not me. I can't. And I presume the press are fully involved at this point, um, fully listening, <laughs> engaged. Uh, well, you know, we, I, I was very thankful. Robin Smith came to a meeting where we were talking about the audit, and she spoke off the record for a minute, and it was nice to see Robin. You know, she, mm -hmm. she's very knowledgeable, too. She is. She is. So, are your meetings filmed? No, no. Um, it takes me probably five hours sometimes to finish all the meeting minutes because where when you don't have documents, you have to have source documents. So I'm kind of making source documents, documenting everything I possibly can, even the attitudes in the room. Right. Because sometimes when you hear things that you say in public that you don't, you're not aware that you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a good teaching lesson. Absolutely. Um, you do record the meeting, so. Um, yeah, we do. Um, we tape. do. Yeah. 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 And I, like I said, I take meticulous notes. It takes me sometimes five or six hours to type them up. Um, condense them is usually 16 to 17 pages. Wow. I did manage to have a one hour meeting on Saturday, which was really great. 
It was a Saturday morning, but it was well, an that's hour. because everybody wanted to be out of bed fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's it, a massive amount of it work. Yes, it's a lot of going back, and it's it's not getting, really a learning curve, but it's a lot when you don't when you don't have people that can work together, and you have people bringing their own agendas to the table. Right. I I do. I'm very outspoken. I do have my own agenda, but when I'm sitting in that clerk's position, I'm the clerk. That is my right. job. I take it very seriously. Um, there was there's been implications of, you know, I'm I'm going to show the other person who was elected treasurer, you know, the legal paperwork, mm -hmm. or I was going to give her some sort of information. I took my oath and I take it very seriously. Right. And that's not something that I would break. That's not something she would break. So it's kind of hard for us to sit back and say, hey, you know what, I'm speaking as a resident, mm -hmm. as opposed to I'm speaking as the clerk. Right. So in her case, it would be the treasurer, which is, you know, it's a, it's a huge issue. Yeah. Wow. And attitudes coming to the table does not work. No. <laughs> It doesn't. Well, it's very I, know, hard. I know you know. <laughs> yeah. It's very hard to leave the attitudes behind sometimes because you're so personally involved, all of you. But you take an oath to do yes. that. You it's know what true. I mean? And I think that's a lot of what our elected officials forget. I'm not saying it's fun being an yeah. elected official. I'm not saying it's, you know, immaculately hard either. But I think it's a good balance, and I don't think it's for everybody, but I think civil right. discourse is a must. If you want progressive ideas and change you have to be that change you have to bring forth them True. ideas and you have to fight for them right clearly a lot of this debt and um confusion i think is probably the easiest confusion is a great confusion, word i like right. that uh has involved other players like the state or the feds are they able to provide any constructive help as opposed to being big and fierce and threatening you, which isn't constructive or well, helpful? to be completely honest, I'm not sure what has been disclosed. This kind of seems to be a one-person show um, at, until this shift of the chair. Okay. Um, so, and again, this the other, the past chair is still on most of the paperwork and mm -hmm. when you're dealing with you know big state agencies they only like right. one person which i find sure. again an issue that's yeah. not a good check and balance not unless those meetings are all recorded and frankly it would be a good idea if everything was so that you've all got some protection when, when do we start having some personal integrity? When do we start taking an oath? When do we start being the change? When do we start saying, okay, I understand you're having an issue. Mm -hmm. I'm having an issue too, but I understand we can't work this out. So we need to find somebody else that can come in and help us. You need help. So where, where do you find that? Where do you, you know, right. it's about your elected officials integrity. That's why your voice, your voice right. is, you know, needs to be heard. You need to be at the right. ballot boxes. You need to be at meetings. You need to be right. saying, okay, I don't agree with that. You need to be able to petition your government with your grievances. It's right. a constitutional right. Just like due process is a constitutional right. Right. I'm not sure that I've found that. So no, I mean, one of the fascinating things that I've seen up here, probably more than in other places where I've lived, is that there's a belief that we don't elect representatives, but that somehow we elect dictators, people who will just <laughs> make decisions and tell us what to do. And that's not what the Constitution is about. It is not. It's of the people, by the people, for, for the, people. the people. Exactly. Not for corporations, not for an agenda, not for a personal gain. Right. That's the other problem, though. Some, somewhere along the line, somebody made a brilliant decision to turn corporations into people. That's Citizens United, yes. Yes. Um, it would be really great if somebody would get around to overturning that because corporations would love are it. not people. That's not their job to be a people. <laughs> it's not their job to function in that way. But of Dollar course. signs don't have feelings, people that's do. That's right, exactly. So that's, that's, you hit it on the head. Right, yeah, that one's a tough one. And that's mm -hmm. going to take a while, certainly not while we have a much larger government body that believes that the corporations rule. Yeah, yeah. And money talks, as yeah. we know. And uh, I think that it's important also to acknowledge that Vermont should be protecting their, their natural resources. Um, I, I have a huge issue with that. I have a huge issue with the fact that water systems don't have to properly notify people. 
Um, right. it, it's it's a huge issue, and you know Vermont legislature legislators really need to stand up and start taking some action. Yes, we are the do. Green Mountain State. What are we if we're not green? Right. We're you need to start listening to your constituents, legislators. <laughs> we're one of the few states that actually has water at this point. Uh, the water table in some other states is disappearing really fast. And if we don't protect it, I mean, we all seem to be so worried about an influx that, that we don't have enough people living here. As the water dries up in other states, you watch the migration here. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, we, we, we're having air quality issues, too. Yes, I mean, we, you, you, we really are. Mm -hmm. You think about, you know, the truck traffic. You think about mm -hmm. the emissions. Yes. That's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's pretty shocking. And, you know, Vermonters can't go into the state house and say, I have this bill signed by every, you know, every Vermonter here. Right and you know make a change your legislators do that we're not yes. a referendum state so yeah you know you really need to be paying attention to what your elected officials are doing are they really representing you right <laughs> they're also in a really tough position because unlike other states where being a representative or a senator is a full-time position ours are very much part-time they all have day jobs correct, correct. and that is tough it's like I said, that, I, I'm well aware of how I tough know it is. You are. Well aware. That's something you know? though that we should be looking at at a national level mm -hmm. in Vermont particularly and in mm -hmm. other states where the same thing applies. Because how can you realistically do all that you're quote supposed to do as a representative and at the same time survive? Because you're certainly not getting a livable salary doing this and and also how do you you know work full-time legislate you know right basically legislation is a full-time job yes. whether you're on a you it know is. municipal level a state level and obviously we know federal level but right. um it's 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 a and tough balancing we want act younger people to be involved at a local level mm -hmm. and at all levels we should be doing things to make that possible mm -hmm. and i also think another issue too is that we have some legislators that you know, serve locally and statewide, or, right. you know, they serve, you know, we, Vermont has a huge ethics problem, huge ethics problem. And I think that if we could get a handle on that, that would kind of bring around some progressive change. And yes. you can't have progress without change. Change isn't always comfortable. Right. So, you know, when do we start, you know, having civil discourse? When does that start being important? <laughs> Probably not, not for, a, not for the foreseeable future. <laughs> I, uh, it's fascinating right now watching things um, disappear from anything that's civil. Brum. Facts do matter. Facts yeah. are very important. Um, they are. Just because you want to believe something doesn't make it a fact. This is true. Uh, um, so I think that, you know, that, that, that's a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I also think that, you know, people coming into, you know, things that they don't have a vote on and trying to bully other people. I think election <laughs> security is a huge yes. issue, yeah. you know, a huge issue. It's, it's it not, is. it's not, it's not easy. It's not fun. But, you know, if you can't sit down and have a agree to disagree, if nothing else, agree to disagree, right. nothing happens. There's no change. There's no right. progress. I mean, it's just hurt feelings. True. Back in, back in the day, you know, <laughs> sort of when Eve was a girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> long, long ago, kids in school learned how to debate. Correct. I don't think that happens anymore. Um, civics, when I was in high school, was a required, yeah. was a required course, and I'm Frankly, quite useful. shocked <laughs> that, you know, th that our young adults and our 20-somethings, you know, are I'm always never. labeled as, you know, these Tide pot eating people, and they're right. not. They're out there saying, hey, we want clean drinking water. We yeah. want, you know, clean air. We want to, you know, have right. land. We don't want to be over overrun from climate right. change. And I think that, you know, teaching them that their their voice is important and right. that they're the future, we need to start validating, accepting, and, right. you know, working together and start being so divisive. Exactly. And I think that starts in our school systems. What is your, what are, what are your kids learning in school? Do mm -hmm. you know, do you go to your kid's school? Do you, 
you know, do you engage with them? Are you at right. the select board? Are you seeing the curriculum? Are you taking the time when they come home right. to look at what they're learning? Do you encourage them to go, you know, yeah. engage in society? I mean, at least based on my very limited experience with the Coventry School, they're doing a phenomenal job with those kids. We are very blessed in Coventry for we many had things. A group many of kids things. here, they were fabulous. The green team is awesome. Yeah. The, the, the school is phenomenal. Um, it's, it's, we, we are very lucky. We are yeah. one of the very few schools in Vermont that are actually growing. We have a growth issue. So um, that's great. Yes, and it's you know the the Coventry school kids also engage. They've you know had conversations with the governor, federal officials, local officials. They they have ideas. They have valid concerns, and they know how to solve them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be teaching our kids: problem solving, not right. you know how to take right. a test. Absolutely, I agree, <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now that you and I have just solved the issues of the world. <laughs> Great. <laughs> not just in Coventry, everywhere. Great. We are unfortunately out of time. Um, I'm going to assume that this saga is going to continue for many, many more months into the future. So can we schedule to do this again sometime soon? Certainly. Hopefully I come back and have some answers. That would be great. Instead of nothing. <laughs> and good luck. And thank you for coming in again. Thank you, Pam.